Hello everyone, this is Susan Jenkins and we are continuing in the reading of the book of Matthew. We're now in chapter 2. In the first video in the series I give a little bit more background into uh, the New Testament, actually a little into the Old Testament. And um, feel free to go back and uh, listen to these all the way through or it's fine to just pick them up as we go along. So at the end of Matthew chapter 1, uh, the angel had instructed uh, Jesus's father, actually it's not his biological father, his stepfather, uh, that he was to name him Jesus. And I wanted to clarify that that is our Americanized um, or English version of his name. Because Jesus was Jewish and all the writers of the Bible were Jewish, his name is actually his Jewish name, which is Yeshua, and maybe more properly pronounced Yeshua. Uh, I don't know Hebrew, so I might not be saying that right, but that is his, uh, his real name. So I wanted to clarify that. Okay, we're beginning in Matthew chapter 2 now. Um, oops, let me scroll up higher. And this is the section where the wise men are coming from the east. So now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and we have come to worship him. Now I wanted to clear up something here too. Uh, Everybody's probably familiar with these wise men, and we picture them as these kings on camels with this very expensive clothing. But that's a, a misinterpretation um, that I'm not sure how that came to be. But uh, so often at Christmas time, that's the images that we see. But if you um, read the, the scriptures, uh, all it says is that they're wise men that came from the east. And we have to remember that uh, these Hebrew scriptures were available uh, to many people and it is uh, researched and uh, found to be um, believable and probably the case that these wise men had access to these scriptures and they thus knew of the prophesied coming king messiah not just any king but the king that was promised that would be the god king the god man in human flesh and so they had been studying this so they are they are coming they see the star that was prophesied to, um, to be a sign of his coming. And now I wanted to share too in Genesis, stars were given um, for more reason than just light. I think it's uh, kind of awesome that the sun was given for measuring day, the days. The moon is for months. We, the moon is a monthly um, cycle. And the stars were more for years. But also God said, let there be lights in the firmament and the heavens and divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. So the stars are also for signs and for God to communicate certain things through the scriptures. So that's these king, these uh, wise men, not kings, knew of this. Okay, so we're on verse 3 now. When Herod, and this is not a nice king, Herod the king heard this. He was troubled. Of course, he feels threatened. He's the king, and he's hearing of this new king that's supposed to be the king. So he was troubled, and all of Jerusalem with him. And when he had, uh, and when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them, Where is this Christ to be born? See, he called him the Christ. He knew who he was. Verse 5, so they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. Now here they go, referring to the scriptures that were written hundreds of years before um, this time. And this is part of an Old Testament scripture here, verse 6. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. It couldn't be any more plain than that. This prophecy written hundreds of years before was saying out of Bethlehem would come the ruler of his people. Verse 7. Then Herod, when he had secretly called, called the wise men, he's like, okay, i got to talk to these wise men. He determined from them what time the star appeared. So he is getting um, inside information here. And when he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go, he's, he's probably playing this off to be like he cares, you know, um, go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring him, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. Now that is baloney because he wants to kill uh, Jesus. When they had heard, the wise men, when they had heard the king, they departed. And behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them until it came and stood over where the young child was. I found that interesting because we always think of the wise men going to the star, 
But this actually sounds like the star led them. It's quite interesting. I haven't studied much into that, but I just found that kind of neat. Verse 10, when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary. And notice how child is capitalized here. When you see things, you know, capitalized other than proper names, you know, like Mary and Joseph, um, something like that, it is usually a sign of divinity of God. Uh, where he saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. Who did they worship? Jesus. They did not worship Mary. They did not worship Joseph. They knew that Jesus was the Messiah, the Christ. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented these gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So either they were wealthy wise men or they had been saving up to be able to give this gift to, to Jesus, Yeshua. Verse 12, then being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. I love how God is communicating through these angels to warn Joseph and the wise men in order to protect Jesus. Because, you know, Satan throughout all of history has been on the heels of the Messiah and on the heels of mankind, incredibly jealous of us and our relationship and being created in God's image. So God is protecting Jesus. 13. Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, again saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I bring you word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt. And he was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophets, saying, Here is another Old Testament prophecy being fulfilled that said, Out of Egypt I call my son. This was written hundreds of years before and fulfilled prophecy. Now these are things that nobody could make happen. You can't make Jesus all these things. There's so many prophecies that were fulfilled that is evidence that, you know, if someone could tell the future, and it came true time after time after time after time, you would eventually believe them. And I'm just amazed at how many people don't believe the scriptures, but many times they don't realize that these proven um, Old Testament scriptures are older than the New Testament scriptures. They truly are prophesied and fulfilled prophecies. Massacre of the innocents, this breaks my heart. Then Herod, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise men, was exceedingly angry, and he sent forth and put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem, and in all his districts from two years old and under, according to the time which he had determined from the wise men. Then it was fulfilled, which was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, another prophecy from hundreds of years ago, which said, a voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation, weeping, and a great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, refusing to be comforted because they are no more. Another fulfilled prophecy. The home in Nazareth. Now when Herod was dead, behold, and thank goodness, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, so here's the angel helping them out again, saying, Arise. Okay, now you can take the young child and his mother and go to the land of Israel, for those who sought the young child's life are dead. Then Joseph arose, took his young child, Yeshua, and his mother, and came into the land of Israel. But when he had heard Archelaus was reigning over Judea instead of his father, Herod, okay, this is Herod's son is now reigning in Judea, he was afraid to go there, and once again he was warned by God in a dream, and he turned aside, and he went instead to the region of Galilee. And then he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled. Here we go, another fulfilled prophecy, which was spoken by the prophets. He shall be called a Nazarene. So we've got here so many fulfilled prophecies. There's so much research you can do. I pulled up one thing, and I'm about at my 10-minute limit here. <laughs> I have a 10-minute limit on my program I use, so I may get cut off. But there are so much. If you want to do some research, if you're any doubtful at all about these being really fulfilled prophecies, um, there's all kinds. Of, I'll provide this link in the About section. There's all kinds of information you can find on the truth of the fact that um, many of the scriptures are dated to the actual scriptures 600 BC. So this is 600 years before the New Testament. So all of these things were written uh, and told.